Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnson, and today I want to talk to you about some exciting news that happened last month in Conway's Game of Life, in particular on February 29th of this year, 2024, the very first ever True Period 15 and 16 glider guns were found. Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about first off what that means. Okay, what is a True Period 15 glider gun? Second, we'll talk about how is it found? Okay, how does someone put together a device like this? And then we'll close with what we still do and do not know about glider guns. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. What is a glider gun? And actually, before we get to that, what is a glider? So a glider is this little five cell configuration right here that moves diagonally across the life plane. Okay, and a glider gun, it's any stationary configuration that repeatedly emits these gliders. Okay, and one of the most well known patterns in all of life is the very first gun ever constructed. It's called the Gosper glider gun, found by Bill Gosper in 1970, way back in the early days of life. And what happens is this pattern uses two configurations called queen bees to bounce into each other, and when they hit each other, they collide in such a way that the debris in the middle creates a glider that then escapes away from the two queen bees, which then just bounce back and forth and do this over and over again. Okay, and this gun, that entire procedure that I just described there, that happens once every 30 generations. Okay, so this is what we call a period 30 glider gun. Okay, there are lots of other glider guns out there as well. Also found by Bill Gosper in 1971, just about a year later, was this gun here, which, well, okay, now this name's a little bit inaccurate, but it's called the new gun, okay? At the time, it was the new gun. And this one, similarly, it uses two configurations of objects to bounce into each other and create a glider when they collide uh, that escapes from those two objects. And it does this every 46 generations, so this is called a period 46 glider gun. Okay, and now a very natural question at this point is, well, what periods of glider guns are there? Can I construct a glider gun with period 31? For example, we just saw how to do it for period 30. Can we do it for period 31? What about period 32? What about period 29? Can we go down? And if so, how far down can we go? And it's actually not too hard to show that the lowest you could ever hope for is period 14. There's no possible way to construct a glider gun that has periods smaller than 14 because you can't space gliders together closer together than period 14. The, the closest that you can pack them diagonally is 14 generations apart from each other any closer than that, and they're actually going to collide with each other. So, like, the mechanism that's used to create them is completely irrelevant. Like, even a period 13 glider stream can't exist. Okay, so the quest then became, okay, construct a period 14 glider gun. Can we do it? And, well, yeah, it turns out that we can, okay? There are mechanisms for sort of merging different glider streams together. So, for example, once we know how to construct a period 30 glider gun, well, we can just sort of cleverly arrange them and merge their streams together so as to create a period 15 glider gun. And similarly, if you have period 28 glider guns, you can merge their streams together to get period 14 glider guns, okay? And these sorts of techniques, they're used by Dietrich Leithner back in 1994 to create the very first ever period 14 glider gun. And then just two years later, David Buckingham came up with a toolkit that lets you construct glider guns of any large period that you like. And when you combine that with sort of the stream merging techniques that we just talked about, it actually lets you construct glider guns of any period that you like. So for example, if you wanted a glider gun of period 31, well, you could just you know, use Buckingham's toolkit to construct a, a glider gun that has period that's a large multiple of 31, and then just merge a whole bunch of those streams together to get the period back down to 31. Okay, so this gave us a toolkit that worked for any period. Okay, if you want a period 14 gun, it would work. 15 gun, 16 gun, doesn't matter. Any period, it would work as long as it's 14 or larger so that such a gun actually could even theoretically be made. And very, very quickly, by the late 90s, we had explicit constructions of guns of basically every period, 14 up to 1,000, and then several other sporadic periods as well. But like the method works for any period that you liked. But there was still something sort of unsatisfying about some of these guns, in particular the low period ones that we constructed by sort of combining glider streams together. These guns, they're called pseudo period guns, okay? Any gun that you construct by sort of taking higher period guns and just merging their streams, it's called pseudo period. 
Whereas now the question became, okay, can we construct what are called true period guns of every single period? And a true period gun, it's a gun where the period of the mechanism creating the gliders is actually equal to the period of the output glider stream. So if we go back, for example, the Gosper glider gun, that very first example that we saw, the output stream of gliders was period 30. And also the mechanism creating it, like those queen bees bouncing back and forth, that was also period 30. So that's a true period glider gun. Similarly with the period 46 new gun, okay, the things, the they're, they're called twin bees, they bounce back and forth at period 46, and the, the glider stream was also period 46. So that's a true period 46 glider gun, okay? And the question was, can we construct true period guns for every single period? And this has been much, much harder, and that's where these new results come in. Okay, so what goes into making these glider guns and why were they found so close together? What's the key common ingredient between them? And that key common ingredient is this funny little configuration here, which is called a B-heptomino. Okay, the B-heptomino, it's not stable on its own. So if you run a pattern in Conway's Game of Life and then just look at the output at the end of the day after it stops sort of wiggling around and burning, you're never going to see one of these because if you let a B-heptomino evolve, it's just going to explode into some junk. It's just going to sort of, you know, make a bunch of ash and make a bunch of other objects, but it has two really nice features that makes it show up over and over and over again in patterns. The first really nice feature is that it's extremely mobile, okay? If you let it run, you're going to notice that, hey, it moves very, very quickly away from where it started, which makes it really useful as a signal, okay? It makes it really useful for transmitting information from one place on the plane to another. Another really useful feature of the b heptomino is that it just appears naturally all the freaking time, okay? So if you run a randomly generated pattern in Conway's Game of Life, then what you'll notice, if you actually watch the evolution, you don't wait until the end after everything's calmed down, but you actually watch the evolution. If you watch it really carefully, you're going to see this B heptomino pop up over and over and over again, okay? So the fact that it's extremely naturally occurring is very useful because it makes it easy to generate as well, okay? So there are lots of oscillators and other guns out there already known that make use of the b heptomino. Okay, so the first step in creating these new period 15 and 16 glider guns was when P1GG, period 1 glider gun, the user who found these guns, they noticed that you can bounce a glider off of a b heptomino in this reaction here. Now this destroys the b heptomino, but it's still useful because you can combine it with other oscillators that we already know that create b heptomino. So for example, if you use a period 15 or 16 oscillator that sort of shoots off a B-heptomino, then you can bounce gliders off of it, creating a brand new oscillator with the same period and sort of makes gliders go around in a loop like this oscillator up here. Now, this is nice, but in a sense, it's not that new because to create this new oscillator here, we had to use an oscillator of the same period. So we had to use, for example, a period 15 oscillator to create a new period 15 oscillator. We don't actually get any new periods or any really fundamentally new type of objects when we do this. OK, but the key insight is that it doesn't have to be a glider that's used as the input to this reaction. OK, it doesn't have to be a glider in to hit the B-heptomino for a glider out. You can replace that input glider by lots of other configurations, actually, and the reaction's still going to work the same way. The B-heptomino is still destroyed and you still get a glider out. OK, so now we have a path forward towards creating a true period glider gun via this reaction. What we're going to do is we're going to take two oscillators of the same period. One of them is going to create the B-heptomino here, and the other one is going to create one of these other configurations that, when combined with the B-heptomino, produces a glider. And fortunately, for some periods, there are already known oscillators that do these tasks. OK, the first combination that works that was discovered was period 16. OK, there's a known period 16. B heptomino Hassler that was found by Nico Brown in January 2024. Okay, and that can supply the B heptomino to this reaction. And then there's also a known period 16 oscillator that can supply the sort of little three cell corner piece there. It's called Charity's P16. It was found by Charity Engine and APG Search. This is a distributed computing project that burns billions and billions of randomly generated soups every day. So just randomly drawn patterns, it lets them evolve for thousands of generations until they 
stabilized. And then it looks for new patterns uh, in this random assortment of crap that comes out of these soups. And this Charity's P, uh, Charity's P16 oscillator that sort of, sort of supplies this corner piece it was found two years ago in January 2022. And sure enough, when you place these next to each other in just the right way, you get this brand new True Period 16 glider gun. And then slightly less than five hours after finding this period 16 glider gun, P1GG did it again and found the first ever true period 15 glider gun, okay? And this one, it was constructed in basically the same way, okay? They took a period 15 Hassler and combined it with some other period 15 oscillator to sort of combine a B-heptomino Hassler with a spark to produce a glider that shoots off. This time, the B-heptomino Hassler that was used, it was period 15, of course. It was found by Carson Chang in July 2023, and they combined it with an oscillator called Corel's P15. This oscillator, it was found by Corel Suhajda in December 2002. Okay, so where does that leave us? What true period guns are actually known at this point in time? So I mentioned earlier that there's this method of David Buckingham for constructing lighter guns of whatever large period that we like, okay? And actually, these guns, they're true period, okay? And using these and a couple other methods, we can construct glider guns, true period glider guns, of any period 48 or larger, okay? So it's just the smaller periods that are still open. And actually, we have lots of sporadic examples like these new period 15 and 16 true period glider guns for smaller periods as well, okay? So there's just a handful of open cases left. The only periods for which we don't know yet whether or not there's a true period glider gun of that period are 14, 17, 18, 19, 23, 26, 29, 31, 35, 38, 39, and 47. Every other period, we either have an explicit example of a true period gun of that period, or we have a method of construction at the very least for constructing a gun of that period. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. Down in the description, I've got links to a bunch of additional resources if you want to do more reading. There's a link to an entire chapter of a textbook if you'd like to go that deep into it. I've also got links to all of the patterns that we talked about in this video if you want to play with them and tinker with them and get a feel for how they work. Okay, and other than that, I'm just going to leave you with a couple words of wisdom from P1GG. They say, if you're new and trying to find your footing in the game of life, stay curious and don't be afraid to crash gliders into stuff. You never know what you'll find.